It's time for our collective worship. And today, as you will see, we're broadcasting this from Holy Trinity Church because tomorrow is Ash Wednesday and that's the beginning of Lent for us as Christians. I told you about this last week, if you remember. So first of all, what we do is we put our three fingers together, our thumb and our two fingers, and we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. So, today is Shrove Tuesday, Pancake Day. I wonder whether you're having any pancakes. This was the day when traditionally people came to church to make their confession to the priest, to get rid of their sins, to be shriven, which gives us the word Shrove Tuesday. To be shrived means to make your confession, to get rid of your sins. And tomorrow, Ash Wednesday, we will begin our journey through Lent in a very special way. Some of you who were in school last year may remember that I brought ashes into the school and we did the imposition of the ashes. First of all, I want to read to you some words from the New Testament, from St. Matthew's Gospel. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And Jesus ate nothing for 40 days and 40 nights. After this, he was very hungry. The devil came to Jesus to tempt him. The devil said, if you are the Son of God, then tell these rocks to become bread. But Jesus answered, it is written in the scriptures, a person does not live only by eating bread, but by everything that the Lord says. Then the devil led Jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem, and he put Jesus on a very high place, the top of the temple. The devil then said to him, if you really are the Son of God, jump off, because the scriptures say he will put his angels in charge of you. They will catch you in their hands and you will hit your foot, not even on a rock. But Jesus answered him, It is also said in the Scriptures, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. So then the devil led Jesus to the top of a very high mountain. He showed Jesus from that mountain top all the kingdoms of the world and all the great things that are in those places. The devil said to him, if you will just bow down and worship me, I will give you all of these things. But Jesus then said to the devil, go away from me, Satan. It is written in the scriptures that you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So the devil left Jesus and some angels, messengers of God, came to Jesus and looked after him. Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. And really, if you look at the story, it's all about yes and no. I've got a little diagram for you to look at about the words yes and no. Should we go and have a look? The words yes and no, we use an awful lot in our everyday conversation. Do you want an ice cream? Yes! Do you want to go and tidy your bedroom? No. A cold, frosty morning. Do you want to get up for school? No. Do you want to go out to the seaside? Yes. Yes and no are words that fly around our heads all the time. Sometimes we have to say yes to good things, and sometimes we have to say no to bad things. All of this we think about in our journey through Lent, as we look towards Easter, as we look towards how Jesus rises from the dead, even though he'd been crucified. Yes and no. You have every opportunity to say yes to good things and no to bad things. So on Ash Wednesday, we will gather in church 
And what I've done is I've taken all the old palm crosses from last year and I've burnt them and I've made ash from the palms. Can you see? I've got lots of it. And I bless these ashes and sprinkle them with holy water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then I sprinkle the ashes over the heads of all the people who are going to come to church. Now, because it's lockdown and this pandemic, we can't do our normal service. So I'm going to stand at the church door tomorrow morning and sprinkle people who come to the door who have asked for the imposition of ashes. And I will use these words. Since the early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church to prepare this for this holy season by penance and by fasting. At first, the season of Lent was observed by those who were only preparing for baptism, by those who had been restored to the church's fellowship. But today we come and ashes are sprinkled on our head as a symbol and a sign of our penitence, our saying sorry to God for all the things we have said and done wrong. The wrong things we've said yes to and the good things we've said no to. So tomorrow I will sprinkle these ashes as a sign of repentance. And this goes way back, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, even into the Old Testament, to remind people of saying sorry to God and choosing a new life. Lord God, I ask you to walk with me through this journey of Lent. To say yes to what you want and no to the things that will lead me astray from you. To say yes to everything that is good and no to everything that is selfish and greedy and wrong. So may God be with you in your walk through Lent. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you are moved by acts of humility. You respond with your forgiveness to our being sorry. So let your ear hear our prayers today and throughout this Lent. And as we are marked with these ashes upon our heads, May we know your grace, your love, and your blessing. Amen.